It's time for the Fred Jackson Show with running back Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinsky. Brought to you by Dewville College, educating for life, and Gate Circle Wine and Liquor. Now from the WBBZ TV studio at the Eastern Hills Mall, welcome Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinsky. <laughs> And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Fred Jackson Show. Great show lined up for tonight. First of all, of course, the star of tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Jackson. <laughs> and we also have a great audience tonight. We have the St. Joe's football team in the audience tonight. Let's hear it for St. Joe's. Fred's special guest tonight, the speedster, Marquise Goodwin, is in the house tonight with us tonight. And if you'd like to tweet us your questions or comments to the Fred Jackson Show at WBBZ. Also, you can find us on Facebook. Brad Gelber is standing by. Let's hear it for Brad Gelber. And it's a special Veterans Day edition. We've got members of the Armed Forces right up front and West New York Heroes. Let's hear it for those ladies and gentlemen of the Armed Forces and West New York Heroes. Okay. That's probably going to be the highlight of the show, Fred, That's because the game was not a good one. <laughs> and uh, you said before, just before you went on the air, you're going to talk about the game tonight, uh, and you're not talking about that one again. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I, I guess I have to know what you're talking about Yeah, you about have right to now. know for at least 20 minutes. Uh, S the Steelers were, were, had only won two games. They're coming off an embarrassing uh, loss to the Patriots. You knew going in, although you can't just look at the record, this was a proud franchise. They weren't going to lay down. But this was not the performance I know your football team had expected to do out there against I mean, not at all. You know, uh, like you said, we expected them to come out and play just because they are a veteran team. You know, one that has a lot of pride. You know, that CD has a lot of pride. So we expected them to come out, you know, and try and bounce back from the, the, the embarrassment that they suffered the week before. Uh, but we didn't play well. You know, we didn't play well in all areas of, you know, football. You know, we didn't play well on special teams. Uh, our defense kept us in it for a while, you know, and uh, they, they eventually, you know, we just left them out there too long. But, you know, that's one that we want to forget, you know, one we have to flush and uh, move on. I'm, I'm guessing from your comments, you're not putting this one on E.J. Manuel coming back, a little ring rust from not being in the game. This was a team effort. Not at all. You know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where they kind of get too much blame when you do lose. And, uh, you know, we didn't help him. You know, uh, we, it wasn't our greatest rushing performance. You know, uh, uh, we didn't, you know, when we got in the red zone, we didn't play, you know, effectively. You know, as an offense, we didn't make a lot of plays at receiver that we're accustomed to making. And uh, anytime you do that, you know, it, it's going to be hard for a young guy to come out there and win the football game for you. So, um, um, it, it's one of those things that we know for us to be successful, we can't play like that, you know, or, or we will get embarrassed like that again throughout the season. All I have to do is ask the Indianapolis Colts today about how inconsistent the NFL can be. I mean, mm -hmm. they got a shellacking yesterday. But your running game was so powerful, so strong against Kansas City, an undefeated football team. What was the difference? What did Pittsburgh do to take away your running game? Well, you, one of the things that I think that they did, you know, being a veteran team, you know, they made checks at the line. You know, uh, they the, they have a bunch of guys who have seen a lot of different wrinkles. Uh, and, you know, through film study, they figured out what it was that they wanted to do. You know, and they kept Palomalu down in the box. You know, uh, he's a guy that can make a tackle anywhere he is. So uh, to have him in the box, you know, contending against the eight-man box, uh, you know, every play, uh, it was it's going to be tough to run against. And, you know, we have to be able to make guys miss to, to break off some of those runs, and we didn't get that done yesterday. You saw Palomalu up close. Is his hair really as silky soft as the TV commercials? Even make? softer than, you know, what they make it Even softer? <laughs> wow. My wife will be impressed. She loves, she <laughs> loves his hair. Uh, the, the Steelers, they came out. They throw an interception. Roethlisberger throws an interception. You come down. It seemed like right from the get-go, had you maybe punched in that first one, the tone of the game, but they stopped you. It was, it was third down. Again, as you said, a struggle inside the red zone. This time, EJ had checked to that play. Yeah. Well, it, it was one of those things where, you know, we got down there and they gave EJ a, a play that was a run-pass option. You know, and uh, with the look that the defense gave us, he thought it would have been smarter just to, to pass the ball. So um, that, that was a wrinkle that we put in, you know, knowing that it might be a different box, you know, depending on what 
what personnel that we had in the game. And, uh, you know, we again, we just got to make that go. You know, whenever he checked it like that, we still got to make that play. It, in my opinion, I'm going to ask you, you know, if you agree with me, I think this game against the Jets is kind of a crossroads game. I mean, the season, it, it, if you're going to have a, a, at least a 500 record, you've got to start winning some football games. Playing the Jets at home, in my opinion, I've got to believe this is one you've got to put in the win column. We need it. You know, it, it's one, you know, uh, that, you know, to lose three games in a row like we have, um, th this is a, is a must win. You know, I feel like that, you know, uh, I mean, it's not going to make or break our season, so to speak, but it's one that we need. You know, we severely need to go out and get a W, and uh, it wouldn't be a better time, you know, uh, going into a bye week to get a win and to play at home in front of, in, in, in the Ralph, in front of the, the Bills fans would be a great place to get a win for us. You've been in this game a long time. You've been in competitive athletics for a long time. Do you have any sense of why a team can come out collectively and be flat? I don't know, you know, and I was trying to figure that out, you know, wrap my head around it all day today, you know, because, uh, you know, we can't have a relapse. We can't have, you know, uh, another showing like that again. And uh, the, the best way to, to figure out what happened is, is well, I mean, is to figure out what happened and try and avoid that again. So, um, but it's one of those things we cannot, we cannot do that. And, you know, it's something that we focused on all day today when we were in meetings and things like that. But before the game, I mean, it doesn't feel different, does it? The energy amongst the players, it's not different until the game starts playing. Then for some reason, things just start to go a certain way. Yeah, I, I kind of felt like, you know, we were, as an offensive unit, you know, we w were waiting for somebody to make a play, you know, and, and nobody stepped up to make that play. And, you know, I, we can't be like that. You know, every time we touch the ball, we have to want to make a play. We have to want to be that spark, and uh, that, that's on us. You know, we got to get that done. Well, Marquise is waiting by. He got the shirt on, the yeah. flash. Uh, I, I was kidding with him. I said we were going to race if there was enough time <laughs> in the show. But uh, like I said, unless it's to a buffet table, I don't think I have much of a chance. We're going to be back. More of the Fred Jackson Show. Marquise Goodwin will be back right after this. the Fred Jackson Show. Our special guest tonight, wideout Marquise Goodwin is in the house with us tonight. Uh, Marquise, first off, uh, welcome to the show. And your name has come up plenty of weeks on the show because my, my pat question to any of the wideouts or even the C.J. Spillers, who's the fastest guy on the team? <laughs> so I'm going to ask you, who is the fastest person on this football team? Fred is. Fred, Fred is? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's diplomatic. Yeah. Nah. Fred, you are the fa Wow, that's a surprise to me. I don't know why. I mean, it depends on what we're racing to. <laughs> if we load us up with, you know, 200 pounds, I might have a chance. Well, we, ladies and gentlemen, we have an Olympian in our presence. Marquise was in the Olympic Games in London, and he has some, uh, a special tattoo that we want to show you. He's going to roll up his sleeve. He actually has the Olympic rings tattooed to his forearm. There they are. Now, I... <laughs> When, how long, how far in advance to the Olympics did you get that tattoo? Um, I got it fall, immediately following the Olympics. Oh, I, right afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't get it before. You know, no. I hadn't made the team just quite yet. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because tattoos are permanent. You don't take a chance. <laughs> yeah. Put it on before. But you were in the long jump. Correct. Or they, was it the triple jump? It was long jump. Long jump, okay. Um, wh how does playing in the NFL compare with going to the Olympics? Man, uh, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Um, you know, it was a lifelong dream growing up as a kid, you know, playing with the football in the backyard. Uh, you're watching guys like Fred on TV and, you know, wanting to be like that guy. And, um, you know, same goes for the Olympics. You know, you grow up, you, run, you do the sport in the summertime, and, uh, you know, you're just growing up wanting to be that guy on the TV, wanting to be in the spotlight, wanting to have that opportunity. And, uh, you know, just took a lot of hard work to get to, you know, where, where I went. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always wondered, you know, when the next Olympic Games come up, will you have interest in trying to compete in them again? Man, you know, I've approached that question plenty of times. And, uh, you know, it's a tough one for me because, you know, football is my first love. But, um, you know, track is another love of mine. And, uh, you know, I don't know. 
if, if Buffalo allows it, then, you know, I'll, I'll try to take a chance and do it again. But if, you know, coaches are like, no, nah, you need you on the field, you know, we're paying you. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be out, out on the field. So You made it clear when you came into town after you got drafted that you weren't a, a track guy who plays football. You were a football player who runs track. Correct. You know, I had to make it a point. Being a small guy um, and, you know, my biggest asset being my speed, you know, I'm already and going to the Olympics as well. I'm already labeled as a track guy. And so, um, you know, go, coming into the NFL, I wanted to let it be known that I am a football player. Yeah, I can remember joking with you about it. And, uh, you know, I think you tried to put your hands on me <laughs> at one point. Uh, but no, I mean, definitely watching him come out the way he works. You know, he, he's perfecting his craft at being an NFL wide receiver. And, uh, you know, it's fun to watch. You know, you can watch the growth, you know, of this guy, you know, who wants to be known as a, a NFL receiver. And, and, you know, I'm glad he's on my team. He's got, you got great hands. You know, you had a disputed catch in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the Kansas City game. Yeah which I thought was a catch. Fred explained to me last week how it wasn't a catch. Yeah, right. But, you know, you've really had the ability to get up, concentrate, stay focused on the ball. So it's not just getting down there and running as fast as you can run. You've got great skills as far as bringing the ball in as well. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. You know, that's one of the things that I, uh, I really take a lot of pride in because, you know, being, being a fast guy, you're really not uh, off the top recognized as a guy who has good hands. And so, uh, you know, I take that into account. I'll try to work on that at any time that I can and try to perfect my craft, as Fred was saying. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I try to work on is focusing and catching the ball. Now, it turns out you two have something in common that you apparently weren't aware of until just recently. Yeah. Um, about, what was that, two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. You know, we were just talking. You know, uh, I think we're heading into a meeting, and we both went to the same elementary, play for the same Pop Warner Pee Wee team. And, um, you know, it's, uh, he sent me some, some film of him actually playing, uh, and it was 02, and I started laughing. I was like, man, I was a junior in college when he was playing Pop Warner football. <laughs> so, but, uh, it, I mean, small world, you know, uh, to, to be able to hang out with a guy like this, you know, who's 10 years younger than I am, and, um, you know, know that we went to the same school was pretty cool. Uh, Doug Marone was talking last week about how this team is special and that it has not just one guy who could beat you along, but a couple uh, players. You know, of course, you have yourself, you have T.J. Graham, you have C.J. Spiller. You know, you guys are breakaway threats any time you get your hands on the ball. So it must be interesting in practice when you guys are running wind sprints and stuff. Do you ever get competitive with any of those guys? <laughs> running wind sprints? I haven't ran those in a while. <laughs> no? But, uh, you know, it, it's always competitive on our team. You know, we try to push each other, um, and, you know, we continue to stay on each other regardless of what it is whether it's sprints or whether it's weights or, you know, whether it's just being in, in the film room and being uh, studying our film even more. Well, now that I know Fred's the fastest guy on the team, I guess I can stop asking <laughs> hey, that question. Yeah, exactly. We've got questions from our viewers. we got uh, Brad standing by. Brad, what do we have? Yeah, the uh, first one's from Buffalo Wingwear, and it's for, uh, I guess, Marquise. He says, Marquise was interfered with and tackled on that Clark interception. Uh, what did the refs say about it? On the interception? Um, oh, the refs didn't say anything. <laughs> you know, they just let them play. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, looking at it, uh, there was a point when we were looking at it on the Jumbotron, the ref actually had his hand on his flag ready to throw it. And uh, when Scott missed the tackle, he put it back in his uh, pocket and he just let it play out. So they didn't, and they didn't give us any kind of ex explanation afterwards. Next, Brad. Yep, uh, this one's from Big Stud Bundy, and uh, it's for Fred. He says, Fred, punting inside the opponent's 40 uh, down 14 seems like playing it safe instead of playing to win. What effect does it have on players? Uh, you know, not much at all. We're going to do what our coach, you know, asks us to do. You know, and uh, in that situation, he, he decided to punt the ball, and the best thing we can do is go out there, you know, punt the ball. Uh, keep those guys from returning it and, you know, try and take advantage of the field position when we get it. Next, Brad. All right, I got to get to this because uh, Denoris Cersei has been tweeting us questions every <laughs> week, so I got I to gotta ask this one. He said this is for uh, Marquise. If Spider-Man and Flash were to get into a fight, who would win? Flash, no question. He knows the answer. <laughs> <laughs> he considers himself Spider-Man, so that he's being funny while he's asking that question. <laughs> Yeah. All right, this one is uh, from Jim Ruther, and uh, it's in reference to last week's game. He said, did the tough loss to Kansas City have a hangover effect on Sunday? I wouldn't say so. You know, um, you, you have to have a short memory in this league, you know, and uh, 
Pittsburgh didn't take it easy on us, you know, so we didn't have to, we didn't have that effect, you know, we just didn't show up. Bottom line, we didn't show up and play well, and uh, Pittsburgh was motivated, you know, they came out and they played well, and, you know, it's, it's the NFL, you know, there's going to be times that you get your butt kicked, and uh, that was one of the times we got our, our butts handed to us. Last question, Brad. Yep, uh, this one's from Derek Warren, and uh, hopefully this is a long time off, Fred, but he wants to know, Fred, will you retire with the Bills? Absolutely. You know, that, that is my always been my number one goal since I've been here is to, to be a Buffalo Bill until I retire. So um, as long as they'll have me, I'll be here. Okay. And we're going to be back with our Hot Shot Challenge right after this on the Fred Jackson Show. Members of our studio audience receive a gift certificate and compete for prizes from Dave & Buster's. Watch the games, play the games at the Eastern Hills Mall. And Poster Art, Buffalo's only poster and t-shirt gift gallery. Featuring the Fred X t-shirt, also at the Eastern Hills Mall. And welcome back to the Fred Jackson Show. It's time for the Hot Shot Challenge. We have St. Joe's with us, as I said at the top of the show. And Coach, uh, what do you got going on this week and who's your opponent? Uh, we're playing St. Francis this uh, Thursday out at the... Uh, at the Ralph and the semis. Always exciting when you get to play out there where the Bills play. Absolutely. Yeah, now you've great. already beaten the Frannies once this year. Yeah, we have, but it uh, should be a real good game. Tough game? Okay. Yeah. And we have uh, a couple of your plays here. We have Nigel. Yes, sir. And what position you play, Nigel? Uh, running back. Running back? Yes, sir. And Mike. Mike, your position? Quarterback. Quarterback. Uh-oh. So Marquise has Mike, the quarterback, and the running backs are going to stick together. So, Mike, you're up first. You're the visiting team. Let's see how Mike, go ahead, Any pick anyone you want, Mike. Oh, okay, Nigel, you're up. Let's see how the running back does here. Oh, well, no, okay, Marquise, you can put your team up on the scoreboard. Oh, he's taking it right from center. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Fred Jackson, who is undefeated in this competition, let's see. Oh, okay, Mike, you're up again, Mike. Hopefully we have time to get a winner here. Okay, Mike, you're up again. Mike got it in. Okay, Nigel, it's up to you. Oh, okay. Marquise, you can clinch it. You can clinch it right here. Fred, you got a chance to tie. Fred Jackson with the tie. He gets it off the rebound. Is that, do we have any time for a tiebreaker? One real quick, and Mike, you get the tiebreaker. You're the visiting team for the tiebreaker. Oh, he got it. All right. Great game. We're going to go inside. We're going to wrap up the Fred Jackson Show right after this. And welcome back. In honor of Veterans Day, we have a special presentation. We have Chris Cote and Chris Krieger from Western York Heroes. And Chris, uh, tell us what we're going to see. Uh, every year we do a ride in uh, memory of my brother Jonathan Cote who uh, was captured and killed in Iraq and uh, this year was the fifth year and we raised $5,500 for Western New York Heroes. Oh, tremendous. Uh, Western New York Heroes just wants to say thank you very much as always and uh, you know, we're always going to remember your brother and hold a special place uh, for the entire Cote family for everything that they continue to do for us. Thanks so much. Congratulations. Let's hear it for Chris and Chris. Excuse as I walk past to the players down here real quick. Marquise, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, Fred, we already talked about this is a big game Saturday against the Jets, Sunday against the Jets. Yeah, you know, one we must have. You know, we know that, you know, the guys are going to come in and prepare all week, and uh, we're excited about getting out there and, you know, having another opportunity to win a game. Marquise, uh, any, any predictions for this Sunday? Just to get a W, that's it. Just get a W. That's get it. it done. That's all yeah. we need. Are you going to get a special Fred Jackson show tattoo maybe at the end of this season to go over next to the Olympic rings? We win the Super Bowl, maybe. Okay, you heard it, folks. So, I tell you what, you guys win the Super Bowl, I'm getting a Fred Jackson tattoo, too. Okay, Fred? Is that right? All right. That's going to do it for this week. Let's hear it for the veterans. Let's hear it for the uh, active uh, members of the Armed Forces we have here. Let's hear it for St. Joe's. Let's hear it for the Buffalo Bills. That's going to do it for tonight. We want to thank everybody. Until next week. This is Bob Kaczynski saying have yourselves a good night and a much better tomorrow.